Kamal Sibal, beyond the handshakes, beyond the smiles, is there a sense that President Barack Obama does not bring to the table the sort of impetus that President George Bush brought to the Indo-US relationship? And in that sense, this visit is more about the symbolism of the president's visit than it is about real substance. You know, both sides have agreed that this visit is not about any big idea. Now, that point is accepted. But there's also the argument that with every visit, you can't have a defining idea of the kind we had when we signed the Indo-US nuclear accord. This visit certainly will be important in terms of symbolism, but it will also bring some substance. And let's not forget that. Uh, on the defense side, I think some deals, even if they're not announced, will be finalized. Uh, we have signed the compensatory Convention on Supplement uh, Compensation on the nuclear side that has taken a difficult issue off the uh, agenda. On the technology ex export control regime, there would be some progress made. DRDO and, uh, and uh, subsidiaries of ISRO will be removed from the entity list. Uh, so that will be a gain since we have been asking uh, for this. But I think the problem is that uh, in background briefings, it has been conveyed uh, to us that the focus of the visit will be economic. Now that takes that takes away from the strategic dimension of the visit. I think such an important visit should have been used uh, to consolidate the strategic relationship, part of which of course is strengthening the economic relationship. But if you put too much emphasis on the economic relationship, then you are detracting uh, from the political security uh, and the strategic part of the relationship. And there, there is still need uh, for India and United States to consolidate the strategic relationship because there's a lot of things the United States still needs to do to undo the whole panoply of restrictions and sanctions uh, and other disabilities imposed on India over the years. And until that is done, there won't be that sense of comfort in the, in the relationship. And finally, I think it was a big error from my part, uh, from my point of view, that they organized the third meeting of the India U.S.-Pakistan strategic uh, meeting in Washington just a few days before Obama was coming here, and then announced that dollars 2.3 billion arms assistance to Pakistan. Now, I, they should have understood that even if we don't protest too much because we want to make this visit a success, this is disregarding India's uh, sensitivities and arming India's implacable adversary. They shouldn't expect that this will go down well. And the signal from this is that there is a still a long way to go in building up a strategic understanding in our region. It's all very well to talk about global issues, global commons, but unless we have a strategic understanding on what's happening in our region, in Pakistan, Afghanistan, on the issue of terrorism, I think uh, we will not be able to build that kind of trust that we need to build and take the best out of this visit. Let me get in a word from Washington. Frank Wisner, former diplomat, joining us now. Uh, Obama needs Pakistan as an ally and India as a friend. Pakistan asking for its pound of flesh, uh, American pressure on Kashmir. The point that Kamal Sibyl is making is that Obama has to keep Pakistan happy. The question is, can he keep both nations happy, sir? Well, that's a tall order, but I'm absolutely certain the United States needs friends in both New Delhi and in Islamabad. And we're not going to be <clears throat> not going to sacrifice the interests of one in order to make friends with the other. That's out of the question. And I frankly do not believe the United States will seek to put itself between India and Pakistan over the issue of Kashmir. Rather, we need a relationship with Pakistan that addresses the dangerous situation inside that country and along its borders. And with India, we need a much broader relationship that is strategic in nature, that deals with the future of the balance of power in Asia, deals with our economy and the global economy, and also sets the stage for India's entry as a major power on the world stage, including membership in key international institutions.